groups provide a way to categorize users on a Synology NAS. We assign permissions to a group rather than directly to a user. We then assign the user to the group to inherit the group's permissions. In this video, we'll cover when and why you should use groups in your setup. Then we'll dig into the details of groups covering built-in groups, creating groups, and assigning users to those groups. If you are following along in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series, implementing user groups on a Synology NAS is the sixth step in the seven video series. On this slide from the previous video, we have permissions assigned to individual users to the shared folders we've created. This works fine if your network consists of a small number of users. However, as we add more users, administering them individually can become tedious and prone for errors. This is where groups come in. Permissions can be assigned to a group instead, and users then can be assigned to the group, inheriting the group's permissions. This makes administering a large group of users much more manageable. Let's start looking at groups. After logging in to Disk Station Manager, I'll go to Control Panel, then Group. Here we see the list of default groups that were created during installation. If we look at the permissions assigned to the administrator group, we see that members of this group have read-write access to all shared folders created by default. The administrator group will be given full access to any added shared folders as well. The HTTP group is the default group for web services and currently have no permission set up. You will need to assign permissions to this group if you enable web-based services. The users group is the default group all users are added to, and in our example network, we can take advantage of this group. Looking at our slides again, we see that both the managers group and employees group have read-write access to the shared folder. Assuming all users will have read-write access, we can eliminate this duplicated setting and assign read-write permissions to the users group for the shared folder to fulfill this requirement. Here I'll edit the users group and assign read-write permissions to the shared folder and click OK. Let's now add a few groups. I'll click Create to start the group creation wizard and start by adding the managers group and then click Next. Manager should have full access to the confidential and employee policy shared folders. So I'll select a checkbox under the read write column for these folders. Note that I don't have to select the checkbox for the shared folder because we set the permissions for this folder with the users group. I'll click next through the remaining windows and click apply to finish up the creation of the managers group. I'll run through the group creation wizard again, this time creating the employees group. For assigned shared folder permissions, I'll select the checkbox under the no access column for the confidential shared folder, the checkbox under read only for the employee policy shared folder, then continue through the group creation wizard to finish setting up the employees group. Let's redo the configuration of both the manager one and employee one users to take advantage of the groups that we just set up. I'll switch over to the user control panel, select manager one and click edit. I'll first go to Permissions and uncheck the boxes under the Read Write column, essentially removing all permissions assigned to Manager 1. We can already see that the Users Group setting for the shared folder is already in effect, as we see that Manager 1 has Read Write permissions assigned through a group. I'll click OK to confirm the changes, then click Edit and View Permissions once again. We can see now that Manager 1 currently has no access to the confidential and employee shared folders. I'll switch to the User Groups tab and add Manager 1 to the Managers group by selecting the checkbox under the Add column and click OK. Once again, I'll click Edit, bring up Permissions, and now we see the Read Write permissions added through Group Permissions for the confidential and employee policy shared folder. I'll click OK to close the settings for Manager 1 and next reconfigure Employee 1. I'll this time go to User Groups and select the checkbox under the Add column for the Employees group and click OK. I'll edit Employee 1 once again, select the Permissions tab, and we can see that Group Permissions of No Access for the Confidential Shared Folder, Read Only for the Employee Policy Shared Folder, 
and read write permissions for the shared folder are all properly in effect. I'll lastly uncheck the boxes assigning permissions directly to employee one and click OK. Let's now create a new user and take advantage of the groups we've set up. I'll run through creating a new employee named employee two, making sure to add the user to the employees group. On the assign shared folders permission window, we already get a preview of the group permissions that will be assigned to the user, which look to be fine. I'll finish up the user creation wizard and bring up the permissions of employee two to confirm that the proper group permissions are in place, which they are. We now know the power that groups can provide, especially if our network has more than just a handful of users. At this point, our Synology NAS has everything in place and it's time to start using it on our Windows 10 and Mac OS computers by connecting to the shared folders we've created through the SMB service. We'll do just that in the seventh and last video in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series. Look for the link to that video and all other videos in the series in the description below which will be added as they become available. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to like it and consider subscribing, which would really help this channel out.